be the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our midst. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you for gift of life. Thank you for living. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence. Oh, King Jesus, we worship you this morning. We exalt your holy name for there is none like you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Lord, we say, blessed be thy holy name. We say hallelujah to your name. Oh, thank you, our Redeemer. Thank you, the Almighty God. Thank you, the Beautiful One. Oh, Lord, we worship you this morning. Lord, we adore you this morning. Thank you, Father Lord. We say, hallowed be your name. Oh, Father Lord, let your will be done in our life, oh Lord God, this day in the name of Jesus, oh Lord God. Oh, Father, as we have come this morning, oh, Father Lord, help us, oh Lord God. Help us to hear you, Lord. Help us to hear you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to recognize your presence, oh Lord God. In our midst, in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we give you all the praise. Thank you for all of us, O Lord God, that are presently on this prayer platform this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for all that will join later. We thank you for all that will go back, O Lord God, and listen, O Lord God, because they want to hear from you. O Lord, collectively, we say thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name this morning. We sing hallelujah to your name, O Lord God. Oh, Father, we have come again this morning. Oh, Lord, we are asking for mercy. We are asking that you shower down your mercy upon us and forgive us of all our sins, oh, Lord God. Oh, any sin in each of our lives, oh, Lord God, that would debar us from hearing you this morning, that would debar your presence from coming to our midst this morning. Oh, Lord, we say we are sorry. Oh, Father, we are sorry. Forgive us, oh, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us and wash us with your blood in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we sprinkle the blood of Jesus and over us, over the airwaves, O oh Lord God, over our dwelling, over our environment, Lord, that we sanctify ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We thank you because there's power mighty in the blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you that you come and have your way this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. In the name of Jesus, oh, Lord God, for as many that you want to, to, to speak to this morning that are still sleeping, Lord, we ask that you wake them up, oh, Lord God. For us that are presently on this prayer platform, Lord, we ask, oh, Lord God, oh, that spirit of our lightness fall upon us now in the name of Jesus, oh, Lord God. Oh, Father, we give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the honor this morning. In the name of Jesus, because we'll speak, O Lord God, of your name with boldness, O Lord God, to all that will hear, O Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you this morning. We thank you. We adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus, eh? glory be to your name. All glory to you, Lord, eh? because all power belongs to you, Father Lord. You are our King. You are our Lord, O Lord God. We worship you. We adore you this morning. Oh, blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah to your name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. We continue to worship the King of Kings this morning by praying and singing, oh, worship the King.
Amen. Amen. It's our Redeemer, it's our friend, and we will faithfully sing to its power and its love. Hallelujah. At this time, let us bring out our Bible. We continue with our quest. We pray with the Psalms. This morning, we are going to Psalm 45. Let us read Psalm 45. Psalm 45. For the director of music, to the tune of Lilies, of the sons of Korah, a masculine, a wedding song. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From palaces adorned with ivory, the music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favor. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her. Those brought to be with her. Led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Uh, this morning, Psalm 45 is kind of a, a special one, a different one. Uh, Psalm 45 is talking about a royal wedding, celebrating the marriage of a king. And also, Psalm 45 is a prophetic psalm. It prophesies of the Messiah as a prince, as a king, as the bridegroom that is espousing the church to himself. So as we go further this morning, we'll see why it's a, it's a psalm of a love. A king professing love to his queen. When we started the second part of this psalm, I remember everyone was explaining to us so we won't go too much on that about the sons of Korah so we know who they are yeah some some believe that oh maybe this maybe they, they composed this song when Solomon was going to marry one of his queen or maybe it was when David was going but this cannot be substantiated but we are not going into that this morning so we want to go into this psalm this morning. We want to see the king here going for a wedding here as a as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the bridegroom and the bride, that's the bridegroom and the bride as the church of God. That is why I said it's a psalm of prophecy, because it's kind of you know telling us about the coming of Jesus to marry the church and who who is the church 
we are the church. So the king as an ideal ruler, the one who is righteous, the one that is filled with grace. And the psalmist also, you know, talked about the king as being committed to truth, being humble, and being a king of justice. So this psalm is, is just telling us the, the qualities of an ideal leader, a quality the ideal leader should possess, should uphold the virtues they should have in their lives. And this goes back to Jesus Christ. This verse, uh, this Psalm 45 is, is, is deep. It points to a deep, deep, intimate relationship between God and his people or between Christ and the church. We see the, the, the language of love, the language of commitment. You know, they are all highlighting this Psalm and they are all connecting portraying a divine marriage for us as Christians, for us as children of God. This is a reminder of the love and the education of Christ for the church. If you break these Psalms down, we see the beauty of the King. We go through verse one to five. Says this person is beyond compare. Thou art fairer than the sons of men. So he's saying, of all the men in the whole world, is fairer than them. So if this psalm is for a king going for a wedding and he's saying it's fairer than all the men in the earth, that king is also a man. So we we'll, we we'll still come back to Jesus Christ here. That's why you know he said it's a prophetic psalm. that is talking about Christ. Jesus Christ engages our love. We have so many things going on in this world, all the charms of this world, everything that kind of draws away from the heart of Christ. The psalmist in verse three to five you know, joyfully foretells the progress and success of the of the Messiah. And he says the arrow of conviction is very, very terrible in the heart of sinners until they are humble and reconciled with Christ. In this psalm also teaches us to see evil as sin beauty as holiness. So that way, we, we are not encouraged to continue in sin. The church is form of true believers. The church here in this Islam is being compared to the queen or to the bride. which Lord Jesus has betrothed to himself. This is the bride of the lambs. And his grace is being compared to fine milling. That means for their purity, for our redemption, we are done all this through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm just trying, you know, it's a, it's a very deep, deep Bible verse. I'm trying to, to cut it short as much as I can so that we can have time to really pray this morning. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. If we look through that same verse 3 to 5, it's talking about the victories of the king. The victories of the king. We are not talking about any earthly king here. We are talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, we heard about enemies and stuff like that. The enemies we are talking about here is not flesh and blood. They are spiritual. 
And as we see in uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 6, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the world, rulers, darkness, and spiritual hosts of wickedness. So we see how this sound from Old Testament comes to New Testament. But he says his weapon are truth, meekness, and righteousness. That's verse 4. It teaches all some things. His method is humility. It's a spiritual kingdom. If we go further, verse 6 to 9, we see the blessings of the king. Is blessed of God forever. Is being characterized here as the mighty God. And the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, give us the interpretation of this psalm, this very psalm 45. Is being applied to the word to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But of the Son, it says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of his kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy companions. You see how they are just, you know, everything is coming together here. We see that he is a righteous ruler. He is anointed of God. That's verse 7. And if you look through verse 8 to 9, he has come to get married. He has come to get married to us, his children. He has come to get married to us, his queen. He has come to get married to us, the church. In the New Testament, the church is compared to the queen. Is the bride. The church is the bride of Christ. So as a believer, as a Christian, as a child of God, we are his bride. We are his spouse. We see the bride of the king in verse 10 through 15. And the king is lord over his bride. And to be an excellent bride, to be the queen of the king, these brides must take to us some wisdom from the psalmist. If we go through some, verse 10, he's telling the bride, the queen, to forget our own father's house and our own people. Just listen, oh daughter, give attention and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. So this is not literally saying, oh, don't mind your family, don't mind your father, don't mind your mother. What he's saying here is that there must be entire surrender of ourselves to Christ. We cannot be in between. It's a total surrender. We have to surrender. Just as the, this Bible says, you know, the husband is the head of the home, is the head of the wife. So the same thing is talking here. When he said, daughter, give attention, incline your ear. So you, we have to surrender. It's total surrender. Say, so count all things lost for the excellencies of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, that may forget all the things of the world, all the worldly things, all the things that takes us away from Christ, all the things that make us put one leg in Christ and one leg in the world. He say, forsake all to follow him. You should forget all worldly associations and attachments. That's what he's saying here. And verse 13 is talking about the splendor of the bride. He said that the bride of Christ, the bride of the king, is dressed in white robes of his righteousness, spotless, 
stand before him in fine linen clothes, clean and white, with Christ-like grace. That is what is talking here. And if you look through Ephesians chapter 5, 26, through to 26, we say so that it might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that it might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she will be holy and blameless. And we see the same thing here in verse 13 of this verse. The bride, the bride of Christ is clothed with sanctification, with righteousness, adoption, justification. This clothing are not bought with money. At the same time, they are not without cost. They cannot bought with money, and at the same time, they are not without cost. How is that? Because the king already provides it. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ already provided all these things when he went on the cross. Then if you go through verse 14 through 15, he's talking about the marriage ceremony. You know, he's describing the marriage ceremony that the bride, the queen, says she will be led to the king in embroidered work. The virgins, her companions, will follow her and they will be brought to the king with gladness and rejoicing, enter into the king's palace. So this is talking about another wedding that will take place when the king comes for his bride. Are we ready? Am I ready? Are you ready for that marriage? The marriage of the Lamb. And the book of Revelation describes that wedding. It says, let us rejoice and be glad. That's Revelation 19, 7 through 9. Say, let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Am I ready? Are you ready? to be the bride of the King of Kings, of the Lord of Lords. And he says, and it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. Are we shining? For the world to see, to see the glory of God in our lives, to see God in our lives. Are we clean? He said, for the fine linen is a righteous act of the saints. The finding there is the righteous acts of the saint. It's not the clothes we are putting on. It's a righteous act. And he said to me, right, he said, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. And he said to me, right, write it down. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper. May we be blessed to be invited to this marriage supper in the mighty name of Jesus. And verse 16 through 17, I like to break these terms down when I study them. It's the benediction of the king. Say, in place of your fathers will be your son. You shall make them princes in all the earth. I will cause thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people will give thee thanks forever and forever. The regal glory of the house of Davis has now reached its climax in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Messiah one, the anointed of God, has come in all his beauty. And we'll see that in Revelation 5, chapter 5, 10 through 14 where it declares the worship is receiving right now and we continue through eternity. This is a breakdown of Psalm 45. 
And it is my prayer this morning that even as we move forward from here, even after this prayer time, that the Lord will still continue to espouse this Psalm 45 to us, that we we'll see it beyond a love psalm. We we'll see it beyond the heavenly king going to marry his bride, that the king is talking about here is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the bride is us, you and I, every one of us that has professed Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us what this psalm is telling us, what this psalm is telling the church, what this psalm is telling myself as a child of God, what this psalm is telling you as a child of God, that we strictly cleave to Jesus Christ in singleness of heart, we cleave to him as he has admonished us here in Psalm 45, that we forget our father's house, we forget our people, that means forget everything that you have known before you come to me, forget about them because they are not going to cut it. They are not going to work. This is not how this kingdom operates. Say, so count them as lost. Whatever they are, count them as lost. And if you don't lose, you can't gain. So let us count them as lost. All that we have known, we have to, we have to, give ourselves to him in totality. There's no in-between. We cannot be in-between. We have to worship the king in all his beauty, in all of his holiness. We have to worship him. Worship him in, in, in singing, worship him in prayer, worship him in our deeds, in our action. And why doing this? We do it in all, in all of their beauties so that people see us, they, they know something is different about, about us. They know that surely this one does not belong to, to, to this kingdom. They, they belong to the kingdom of the most high God. I pray this morning that Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your beauty and your wisdom that is found in your word as we reflect on Psalm 45 this morning. Father, we ask that you help us, help us to appreciate you, help us to embody the virtues of truth, the virtues of humility, the virtues of justice, in each of our lives. Oh, Father, we ask this morning in the name of Jesus that you will remind us, Lord, of your abiding love, of your deep love that you have for your people, the commitment that you have made to us. Oh, Father, Lord, help us. Help us to strengthen our relationship with you. Help us to cultivate unity within our communities of faith, within our church, within our brothers and sisters. Help us because we know we cannot do it by ourselves. Oh, Father, we ask this money that you will grant us the grace and the wisdom to uphold the qualities of a good Christian, of a good leader, in ourselves and in those who lead us. And even in those that we lead, some of us, we lead some people and some of us have been led. Help us, Father Lord, to always seek to serve you in truth and righteousness. The word of God says, righteousness exalts a nation, but truth above sin is a reproach. Help us, Lord, 
Help us to serve you in truth and righteousness so that our life will be a testament, O Lord God, to your love, to your commitment of goodness in each of our lives. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we worship you this morning. We thank you for your word that has come to us this morning. Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you. We ask that you keep us close so that others can see the power of your name through us, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, keep us from temptations. Oh, Father, we ask that you deliver us, O Lord God. Deliver us from flesh so that your name will not be blasphemed. Oh, Father, we return all glory to you, Lord, this morning. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning, O Lord God. We thank you, we worship you, we adore you, Lord. That every time we call upon the power that is found in your name, there's power mighty in the name, Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, let your name continually be on our lips. When we rise in the morning, when we lay down to sleep, because your name is great and is powerful. Lord, we ask that you draw your hearts, our hearts to yours, O Lord God. Bring us close into your presence in the name of Jesus. So that way we speak your name with boldness, without fear. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we worship you this morning. Oh, hallelujah to your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Glory be to your name. Honor be to your name. Adoration be to your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Thank you, I am that I am. Hallelujah to your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to begin to pray at this time. We want to pray at this time. I don't know which verse has spoken to our heart this morning in this Psalm 45. Let us begin to thank God this morning. Thank him. Thank him for his word that we just had this morning. Bless his name because there's none like him. That particular verse that the light has touched light for you this morning, pray with it this morning. Pray with us particular verse this morning. And he will hear us. He hears us when we call upon him. Pray to him this morning as we reflect on that verse this morning. Reflect on that verse this morning. That verse that is speaking to you. And that verse too says, this person is beyond compare. Thou art fairer than the sons of men. Worship him this morning. Worship the king in all of his beauty. Worship him this morning. Only the living can worship him, can sing praises of him. Father, we thank you this morning. We worship you this morning because none can be compared unto you, Lord. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancient of days, O Lord God. Oh, Father, we bless your holy name this morning. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, I am that I am. Glory be to your name in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you this morning because we are blessed people. Because your name is Jehovah. Your name is almighty. Your name is a strong tower. And we run into that name, oh, and we are saved. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, this morning because you are our king. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt your holy name. We lift your name, O Lord God, because you pour out your grace on us. Even when we do not deserve it, even when we were lost, 
you still poured your grace upon us. Oh, for this, Father Lord, we are grateful this morning. For this, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Father Lord. Oh, we say hallelujah to your name, O oh Lord God. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to thank him this morning. Thank him because he fills our heart with pleasantries. Thank him because we have a king we can turn to. As a queen, we have our king that we can always go to. And the king never leaves his queen suffering. The king we never neglect his queen. We are his queen. He is our king. They thank him this morning because we have him to turn to. Thank him because he poured out his grace on us. Thank him this morning because he will pour out, he will continue to pour out to us the truth, the truth of himself, humility, justice. Thank him because his throne will last forever. Father, your kingdom is marked by righteousness. We will live a life of righteousness in the name of Jesus because God loves righteousness. He loves justice. We see that in verse 7. Also in that verse 7, we see that God hates wicked and evil things. Pray this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are God of righteousness. Help me to live righteously. I want to live a righteous life. So the evil will not be found in me in the name of Jesus. Thank him this morning because he will anoint us with the oil of gladness. Father, anoint me with oil of gladness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank him this morning because all things of value, all things of beauty belongs to the Lord, belongs to the king. As a bride, as the queen, I have access to all this in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you because in unity with you, Lord, there is joy, there is gladness, oh, Lord God. Thank you because we have received a royal identity in you. Thank you because you promised to lift us up. We, your people, we, your bride, we, your queen, you promised to lift us up. And for this, Lord, we are grateful this morning. We thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Tell him this morning that, that every evil desire, that every evil thought, that thought that is not of God, tell, talk to him this morning. Lord, I'm submitting them into your hands this morning. I'm submitting them to you, Lord, this day. That desire that is not of you, that evil desire, that worldly desire, that desire that cannot be found in you, I submit them to you this morning. In the name of Jesus, tell him this morning, Lord, I'm trusting that you overflow me with your grace today so I can pour out your grace on everyone I come in contact with. I can pour out your grace on my fellow brothers and sisters. Trust that to him this morning and he will do it. Tell him this morning to fill your heart with that knowledge, with that understanding that you are blessed by him as we walk through this world in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we bless your holy name. We sing hallelujah to you, Lord Jesus, this morning. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes fear, fear draws us back. Draws us back from doing what is right, from doing what God is expected of us. So let us pray this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have power over worry, over fear. Declare this morning. I am strong. I'm of good courage. I'm not afraid or dismayed for the Lord is with me wherever I go. Like Joshua said, 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we know sometimes worry and fear take us away from you, our King. Take us away from worshiping you in all your beauty. So, Father, this morning, I decree and I declare that we are strong, we are of good courage. We are not afraid, we are not dismayed. For you, Lord, you are with us wherever we go. For you, are our King, you will take care of us in the name of Jesus. Thank him this morning. Tell him, I am delivered from all troubles. All troubles, not some. All troubles, I am delivered in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord has delivered me from my fears. Tell him this morning, I commit my way unto you, Lord. And I trust in you. Psalm 37 verse 5. I commit my way unto you, Lord, and I trust in you. I praise Lord this morning. I praise you, Lord, this morning. Because you are my health, you are my countenance. Everybody, I cast this unto you, Lord, because I know you will sustain me. Psalm 55, 22. I cast all my body upon the Lord this morning, for I know the Lord will sustain me. In the name of Jesus, that body that is not making me to worship the king in all of his beauty. He says he's fairer than all the men in the land, all the men in the old world. So what is that body? This morning, I cast this unto you, Lord, because I know you will sustain me. This morning, we cast all our body unto you, Lord, because we know you will sustain us. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank, thank, tell him this morning that my heart shall not walk in heaviness. Proverbs 12, 25. My heart shall not walk in heaviness. In the name of Jesus. Because when the heart is heavy, you cannot worship the king in all of his beauty. And we want to worship him in all of his beauty. That is what this psalm is telling us this morning. Because we are the righteousness of God and we are not moved by anything. Nothing, nothing shall move me. Nothing shall move my household. Nothing shall move the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Because we will not walk in heaviness, heaviness of mind, heaviness of body in the name of Jesus. Pray this morning that my mind is stayed on the Lord through his word. I will read his word. I will listen to him. Speak back to me because I trust him. My mind is in perfect peace. Our mind is in perfect peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah to your name. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 25 verse 2 says, when I put my trust in the Lord, I will not be ashamed. And my enemy shall not triumph over me. Pray this morning that I will put my trust in the Lord. And because I put my trust in the Lord, I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. An enemy shall not triumph over me. Enemy shall not triumph over my household, over my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Psalm 31 says, when we trust in God, he will deliver us from the hands of our enemies and for those who persecute us. And when we are talking of enemies, it's not that man, it's not that woman, it's not just anybody. Enemies are things that we surround, things we have no business doing, we are doing, they are enemies. They stand between us and God. Pray this morning that God's face will shine upon me and he will save me, save my household for his mercy's sake. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 34, 22, he's saying, all who trust in the Lord will not be desolate. That means will not be empty, will not be deserted, will not be empty, will be full of the grace of God, will be full of the word of God, of the power of God. So that way we can worship him in all of his beauty because 
is a beautiful king. He has all the beauties because he's fairer. He's fairer. Oh, hallelujah. Fairer than the sons of men. Fairer than anyone you can think of. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you this morning because we know we are blessed because our trust is in you. Tell him this morning, I am blessed because I have made you, I have trust in you, I have made you my pillar this morning. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, we worship you this morning because when we are afraid, Lord, we will put our trust in you. We will not fear what man will do unto us. No, we will not fear what man will do unto us because we know the one that is fairer than all the men, all the sons of men is fairer than all of them. That means there's none that can be compared to him. It's uncomparable. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we bless your holy name this morning. Lord, we have cried unto you this morning. In our distress, we cried unto you, Lord, this morning. And we know that you have heard us. We know that you continue to hear us, O Lord God, because we put our trust in you, O Lord. And you said, because we put our trust in you, Lord, we'll be blessed, O Lord God. Oh, Father, Lord, we offer our sacrifices unto you this morning that we we'll trust in you, that we we'll obey you, that we we'll worship you. We we'll worship you, the King, in all of your beauty because there's none that can be compared unto you. We will worship you even when it's not convenient for us. That's what, what is talking here. Sometimes we do some things, even some secular things, it's not convenient for us. But maybe because it's our brother, it's our sister, or it's somebody close to us, we still find time. We'll be inconvenience ourselves to do that thing. So the same thing the Lord is telling us through this psalm this morning, that we should not compromise. Sometimes they see us as only thou. It's okay. Sometimes they see you as not being social. That's fine. Pray this morning. We all know what, that one thing that we are battling with that is not making us to worship the man that is fairer than all, all the sons of men. We all know that thing that is not making us to do it. Or maybe we are, we are lacking in one aspect of worship. There are diverse ways to worship the king. He said, worship the king in all of his beauty, in our actions, in our inactions, in our thoughts, in our praises, in our prayers, in our reading of the word, even in our body languages, we worship. Oh, God will help us this morning. God will help us moving on from here in the mighty name of Jesus. that our trust will only be in him. Our trust will mean his protection over us in the mighty name of Jesus. And according to Psalm 61, that we will abide in the presence of God in the name of Jesus. We will abide in his presence. In the name of Jesus. And we will wait. We will wait upon him. Because our expectation is from him. He is our defense. We shall not be moved. That means we shall not waver. We shall not be moved. Either to the left, to the right, forward, backward. No, we shall not be moved. By anything, by any circumstances, by any situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we we'll bless your holy name this morning. Thank you for speaking to us through your word this morning. Thank you for bringing to our remembrance this morning through Psalm 45, oh, Lord God, your love, your love for your bride, for us, 
for us Christians, for us your children, for us the church, oh Lord God. Oh Father, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will help us, oh Lord God. You will help us to walk in righteousness. You will help us to walk in humility in the name of Jesus, that will be Christ like in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we bless your holy name this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus. This morning we are interceding for the singles. For the singles among us. We all have them around us. They are, they are our children, as they are our sons, they are our daughters, nephews, nieces. We have them all around. And even in the body of Christ, I say, oh, let us lift them up before the throne of grace this morning. Let us thank God. Let us thank God for their lives. Thank God for how far God has brought them in the name of Jesus. You know, from the womb now, they are, they are, they are children of marriageable age in the name of Jesus. Let us pray for favor, favor over them in the name of Jesus. As they see, or as they are in any relationship, let us add that the favor of God will be upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, for as many that are seeking, in the name of Jesus, that that divine spouse, that the Lord has ordained for them will come their way in the name of Jesus. For as many that are even in relationship, even as we pray this morning, you know, some relationship, you know, should have ended long time ago, you know, but because of fear, because of, oh, I want to get married. Oh, because of what people will say, they still continue with it. Oh, Father, Lord, this morning, for as many of all the singles that are in relationship, and that relationship is not healthy, that relationship will not glorify your holy name. That relationship will not make one of them or both of them to worship you, the king, in all of your beauty. Oh, Father, this morning, we ask on their behalf right, that you put an end to such relationship. Right? In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak to their heart, oh Lord God. Let them see reason why that relationship should pend there. In the name of Jesus, I, oh Father, and as you do so, Lord, I, we ask, oh Lord God, that the right one, oh Lord God, you will bring their way. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Father, Lord, we pray this morning. Because, oh Lord God, all our single ones, all of our children, oh Lord God, all singles all over the world, Father Lord, they are destined. They are destined for a purpose, oh Lord God. So there's a divine spouse, oh Lord God, that will help them to fulfill that purpose. So, Father Lord, we ask that such spouse, oh Lord God, you will bring to their way in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, we come against every exchange, every counterfeit exchange of spouse, oh Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, because we want your purpose to be fulfilled eh, in the lives of this ones, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we bless your holy name this morning, because you will do this for all our singles, oh, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, they will fulfill purpose, oh, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Lord, my Father. Oh, it's not about love. No, we find out that love does not sustain any marriage, Lord. It's about, oh, Lord God, your plan, your purpose, and your divine assigned spouse, oh, Lord God. Oh, Father, Lord, and that is the one we're asking for, for them this morning. In the name of Jesus, as we leave them before you, Lord, and for that woman, that man, oh, Lord God, that will help her to fulfill purpose. For that man, that woman, oh Lord, that will help him to fulfill purpose. Purpose in you, oh Lord God, not in the world, not their own desire, not their own purpose, but your own purpose for their lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we Bless your holy name this morning. We thank you, Father Lord, for this opportunity given unto us this morning to come into your presence, O oh Lord God. To hear from your word, uh, to pray to you, O oh Lord God, to intercede, O oh Lord God, for our single ones. Oh Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, because you said that the mention of that name, Jesus, every name was bow in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you this morning because we have come in the name of Jesus. And we say every name, 
that is not making us to worship the king in all of his beauty. Oh, Father, Lord, we declare this morning that such name bow. Bow to the King of Kings this morning. Bow to the Lord of Lords this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every desire of our heart that is not making us to worship the King in all of his beauty. We say bow this morning. In the name of Jesus. Bow to the name of God. Bow to the power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we worship you this morning. As we go into this new day, into this new week, eh? as we go into your house this morning to worship you, we are the church, oh, Lord God. And we just heard about your love for us, oh, Lord God. We just heard about how you want us to live to us. Father, Lord, help us. Grant us that grace, oh, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, make this week a blessed week for us. Make this week a glorious week for us. Eh? As we go, Father, Lord, we'll go in peace and we return in safety in the name of Jesus. Your angels will encompass us, they will surround us, they will guide and wash over us eh? in the name of Jesus. Eh? Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank you for all the blessings of this day, of this week, eh? because your word said daily you loaded us with benefit. Oh, Father, we receive them with thanksgiving this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We worship you, we adore you in the name of Jesus. Take all the glory of this day. Take all the glory in each of our lives, in each of our homes, in each of our families, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. To you alone, Father, be all the glory. To you alone, Father, be all the honor and adoration this day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone.